Good morning, friends. Welcome to Harmony Hills Home and Garden. I'm Jenny, and we live and garden here in Baltimore, Maryland, Zone 7. Today is the day I need to get a lot of my seedlings into the ground, my cool weather annuals and some perennials. Get them into the ground because it's time and I need to go out of town soon, and I don't want my house sitter to have to worry about taking care of seedlings. I'd rather they be in the ground and safe and growing. So let's see what we're gonna plant and where we're gonna plant them and get the jobs done. It's a cool morning here in Baltimore today. We got down into the mid thirties last night and it's only 40 degrees right now. This is all Fahrenheit, of course. And so I'm dressed up in my um, you know, warm weather gear I mean my cool weather gear, duh. And I am gonna see what I can get done in the garden today. Um, we are supposed to not have any more freezes, I think, in the 10 day forecast, which by the end of the 10 day will take us well past our normal last frost date. So, um, you know, even the 90% the, uh, chance of uh, not having a frost. So, um, so I'm pretty confident that we aren't gonna have any more freezes or frosts However, there's always, you know, the unexpected weather event that could come through that the forecasters miss. So I'm not putting any of my warm weather annuals out quite yet. Still too soon for that. We normally do that around Mother's Day weekend, which in the U.S. is the second Sunday of May. This year, I believe it's May 8th. So, um, so the warm weather stuff like zinnias and mahogany splendor hibiscus, basil, um, uh, did I say zinnias, cosmos, those things are going to wait indoors or maybe they'll start hardening off again outdoors. I've pulled them inside since we had this cold snap. Um, but the cool season stuff, like all my snapdragons, my ageratum, my um, scabiosa, my status, things like that, they are ready to go. They're sized ready and they are hardened off already. So it's time to get them in the ground. Let's take a peek at what we have and see where we might put them. All right, here we are in my, uh, by the way, I bought a second one of these guys, which I had been hardening off my warm weather stuff. Like there's my dusty miller that stayed outside in this cool zone. Um, so this was filled with warm season annuals, but those are all back inside under the lights now, except for the dusty miller. Anyway, over here, these are the stuff that I've been starting. So there's some perennial yarrow that's ready to go out. This is feverfew, it can go out. Um, here we've got some tall snaps that were not uh, pinched um, and they are ready. Uh, unfortunately, some of my vines have been suffering drought in my warm shelf here. I um, am not, not doing well with those, but I have more seeds, I could restart them. These are the Cathedral Bell vine and this was Cypress vine. Uh, down here, Ageratum, all looking great and ready to go. This is, uh, what is this? Verbena bonariensis. Look, after I was so worried that they weren't going to sprout, there they are, and they're looking gorgeous, ready to go. These are blackberry lilies. Uh, white swan echinacea, struggling along, um, but maybe we'll get two good ones out of it, but I'm going to leave these in this tray for now. Over here, more snaps that didn't get pinched. And here are the pinchings, the cuttings of snaps that I'm rooting. And um, the roots are all coming out the bottom now. So they're ready to go in the ground. Down here, these are diff three different kinds of status. And what I thought was one gomfrina turned out to be one alyssum. So one valiant alyssum blooming on its own. Down here are my strawberry bare roots. And some of them don't look like they're doing anything, but we've got, I believe, three of them that are putting out green shoots. So I don't know what to expect from that. Okay, over here, ranunculus have sprouted. I brought them outside to harden them off and the containers they're in don't have any drainage. So last night's rain uh, is still in the containers. I need to get these in the ground today. Um, and then these are all my um, liatris that I got corms and I've got a lot of them. All of these are liatris. So plenty of these to go around and they're ready to go. So uh, yeah, that's all good. Over here in my winter sowing area, there's a few things that can go. All the alyssum can go out. These can go out. These are the poppies. The, I said in my video they were Himalayan blue, but no, they are Hungarian blue poppies. They're ready to go. Uh, Fox will have seedlings ready to go. This, uh, I think it was supposed to be a blood root, but I don't know if that is really a blood root or if it's a weed, I don't know. It's probably ready to go. These violas can go. Uh, that may be it. 
Uh, oh, all these strawberries need to be taken care of. These are the ones I got from the nursery. Um, these are all my trees. They're doing fine. Um, they're just biding their time, putting on roots. And there's some more trees over there. And let's see, the agapanthus are turning green and growing. No signs really yet from any of the geranium. Maybe there's one geranium sprout coming out, but the rest of them haven't broken yet. So that's the status of things that we could be putting out. I think I'm gonna start with the snapdragons and put them out in the front garden um, near the front. Hey, while I'm gathering my supplies, see if you can guess what my favorite springtime color in the garden is. Was your guess purple? I'm thinking this is a great spot for the snapdragons. In here between this soft touch holly and the lemon thread cypress and the uh, blue star juniper. Boy, we have uphill to drag that thing and it wipes me out every time. So I've mixed up all the four different varieties of snapdragons and I put them all on this side of the uh, front walk. Over here, I've got Montauk daisies in the relative same position. And so we're not gonna have a perfectly symmetric front walk this year. That's totally fine. Also, I haven't put any netting or any other type of support on these snapdragons quite yet. I'm gonna kind of play it by ear as the season progresses. I might put in some string netting or some other type of support for these. I have not yet pinched these and, because these are the actual um, pinchings, the cuttings off of the other ones that I did pinch. So um, I might pinch these before they grow too tall so that they'll be bushier to start. Um, I'm really hoping that this fills in with a beautiful mix of color of beautiful snapdragons this season. I've never grown this type of snapdragon before, so I'm eager to see how it does. Okay, next up, I want to plant my ranunculus. Now, I feel like I'm a little bit behind season on this. I think, I don't know how these are going to do, but we're going to put them out here in these two front areas. I've got 25 of each in these containers, pink and white, and I don't know which is which. I'm just going to mix them up. And then I have a few others because they sent me more than 25 per color. So I've got a few random assortments in another container over there. So we're going to put 25 on each side here if I can find room for that many. I'm going to space them about four inches apart from each other and fill in as many as I can here. If I have any left over, I'll put them up in amongst the violas and hyacinths up on that front side of the uh, front walk up there. Now these did a really nice job of rooting in, as you can see. The roots coming down from each of the corms. So I'm just gonna grab one of these out, show you what it looks like now. Easier said than done, maybe. Here we go. 
So this one corm has two sprouts on it, three sprouts on it. Nice. It is getting windy, which means it's getting colder as you're out here in this cloudy sky, wind, 40 degrees. Boo! Not what we're accustomed to from last week when we were in the 70s and even low 80s. Anyway, all right, so I have 25 mixed pink and white ranunculus planted right here, kind of in this patch right there, and then 25 mixed in the patch uh, right over there. And so I do have some left over. I don't know how many. So I'm going to find a nice little spot where I can tuck in maybe 10 or 15 mixed pink and white ranunculus. Let's go look for a spot. I think I'll squeeze some in right in here in these little triangle spaces with the hyacinths and the violas. There are some empty holes here and the hyacinth foliage is going to be going away. Um, it won't be here all summer. And so I think if I tuck in some ranunculus in here, it should be a nice little pop of pink and white to go along with this blue. I have two little cell packs of straw flowers that I grew from seed and I only have looks like two four seedlings two of them have two in a cell but I'm not going to try to separate them because their roots are probably pretty well interconnected so I only have four seedlings of uh, straw flower I'm gonna just pick a spot kind of figure out just wherever I want them they need to be spaced 10 inches apart from each other um, they'll grow about 24 to 32 inches tall, I think, um, and these are mixed color flowers. So I'm just going to pick a spot to put four straw flowers in here. four straw flowers in the ground. I'd like to plant these Verbena bonariensis. Now these grow really tall, thin branches that come to be about three or four feet tall even. And at the ends of the branches, they have these little um, purple ball shaped flowers. And um, they kind of, you know, they're kind of wispy, but strong. They, they're great for interplanting around other stronger, bigger flowers. So I'm trying to find the best spots. I have four cells of successful Verbena bernariensis. I do have some winter sown ones that are still coming along as well. Now, some of these cells have more than one plant in them. I'm gonna see if they can be separated without disturbing the roots too much, but I want to make sure that I get at least four plants. So I might not try to separate them if it looks like it will be too hard on the roots. So in that case, I will just trim back the extras and only plant, you know, I'll plant the whole cell, but then trim back the extras to thin them out. Um, so four plants, I'm trying to figure out where in the garden I want to put them. And I want to have them kind of like coming up through other things. So near daylilies would be great, near stronger flowers like um, lilies 
or uh, purple cone flowers or other things that are bigger flowers that are more bulky flowers. These are wispy and um, kind of airy around that. So placing them is going to be a learning experience for me this year. I'll probably learn that I don't like where I placed them and so next year when I do them again these are annuals um, I'll put them in other spots and keep learning as I go so first I think I'm gonna put some back behind this azalea which might not stay here uh, in front of the uh, Miss Kim lilac between the um, smoke bush and the delphinium and the reason I'm putting them there is because I do have a couple of powwow wild berry echinacea in there. And if those bloom nicely, then this might look really nice kind of nestled in amongst or behind them. So I'm going to put one of these cell packs in that area. Not the whole cell pack. I'm going to put one of the cells of the four pack in that area. All right, this is one that has two in it. Let's see if they're easily separatable. No, I'm not going to try to separate them. I'm just going to plant them both. All right. I'm going to put one right here between the Sunshine Ligustrum, the Orange Rocket Barberry, and this Lily. Um, these are three Mexican petunias which haven't broken dormancy yet. They may or may not come back in my garden. A viewer said that his doesn't don't come back until the hot season hits, so maybe they're just slow to come back. I don't know. Anyway, I'm going to put one of them right here, and maybe that'll be a nice, pretty, airy thing around this group of flowers. We'll find out at least, won't we? I think I'm going to put these other two over on the North Lawn border. Um, I have in mind that I'm going to be putting a lot of dahlias over there. And so if I put these near where dahlias are going to be, that might be a really nice combination as well. So let's go over to that North shrub border. Somewhere around in here, maybe. Ooh, maybe back behind the... Uh, pink chiffon rose of Sharon I mean the the sugar tip maybe back behind the sugar tip in front of the Clara. if I put two of them in there that might be a nice little pop of purple stuff yeah let's do that now in the future these are going to be so big that there's not going to be any room for anything behind this shrub but for this year when everything's still small and new for sure there's room for it here so I think I'm going to put both of these two cells in here and then it'll be I don't know, we'll see how it looks as the season progresses. If you're planting these together with each other, they're supposed to be spaced 24 inches apart. 18 to 24 inches apart. All right, so that's a grand experiment. We're gonna see how those do there. With any luck, that'll be a really nice placement. We'll see. I have this little cell tray for each and each of them had had three starts of blackberry lily. This one seems to have drowned um, because it sat in some rainwater for too long, but maybe it'll still be all right. I'm just going to plant four of these clumps together. I'm going to keep all three of these plants together because they'll grow up and I'll divide them later as they're more adult. I'm going to find a spot where I want to put all of these, all 12 of these little tiny starts in the same general clump area. And that way it'll be a beautiful big clump before too long. So I think they're going to go over in this garden between the tall black rose arbor and the lemon thread cypress. I think I'm gonna put them like right here between these two alliums. Um, maybe more like this. Yeah, that's probably better. When the alliums are done and gone for the season, this will be in the center of this open area. Now last year I had dahlias that I grew from seed in this spot right here. And, uh, but this year I don't have any perennials here anymore. So I think this might be a nice spot for these. little teeny tiny blackberry lilies all in one little clump i mean of course they'll need to be divided eventually but uh, for now they can grow 
together in their own little clump. Guys, it's getting colder and windier. I don't know how much more I'll be out here doing stuff, but I do have these 31 beautiful looking blue ageratums that I want to put in. I'm not putting them all in the same place. I'm going to kind of spread them around the front yard so that it's a repeated color pattern. Sorry about the wind on the microphone. I don't have my um, other mic on. Anyway, so let me see if I can find spots to put 30 blue ageratums. Well, friends, that's it for me today. It's just too cold. I got other things to do too. So thanks for hanging out with me as I put some of my annual seedlings into the ground. I'm really excited and I can't wait to see how these grow over the coming season. I hope you're having a wonderful day wherever you are too. And I hope I'll see you again in another video real soon, friends. Take care. Bye-bye.